and welcome to Indie Encounter. My name is Sandra Lorraine Coleman. The mission of our show is to give independent performers and artists access to as wide an audience as possible and to give you, our viewers, a window into their art, their artistic process, and why they have chosen their particular avenue to connect with the world. All art is about communication and connection. Let's meet today's indie artist, Brandon D. Bruce. Brandon, welcome. Welcome, welcome to Indie Encounter. Thank you. I, I feel welcome. That's uh, good. Very comfortable. It, you do so much. So much. You're so talented. Tell us about your entrepreneurship. <clears throat> my entrepreneurship. Um, right now I'm in the process of building my own production company. It's really with um, my friends and the people who are interested in the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to be around like-minded people. What we will be doing uh, to start off the business um, for the production company, we'll be doing like uh, independent films, music videos, just things that people need recorded, whether it's just videography for celebration of events, or weddings, or uh, anniversaries, or uh, anniversaries of a company, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what the new production company is about. Uh, just for the people who don't have the means to get the exposure out themselves or that multimedia access, right. um, we provide that. Right. So I'm pretty excited about it because I have a lot of friends who um, who either sing or they have a band or they rap and uh, now they're they want to get uh, more exposure or they want to get their videos out and we do all the editing and the mm -hmm. videotaping and if need be we do set designing and uh, just the whole writing and directing of the the video if they need it so I have a whole team of people who are interested in this field wow. so we're just gonna blow up together. Wow, so tell me now, how old are you? I'm only 25. You said only. Because I, <laughs> I, I know I have a lot more years ahead of me. Of course you do, so. of course you do. But I think it's brilliant that you're this focused <laughs> and know that, you know, this is what you want to do and this is who you want to surround yourself with, your friends that you guys have decided to this venture together. Most 25-year-olds are not that focused. Now, what would you say to them? Um, first of all, I'll say, did you hear that, Mom? <laughs> 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 but um, what I would, I hang around a lot of older gentlemen, mm. uh, even older ladies, um, because I believe everybody needs a mentor. Mm. So I have maybe three, four, five just uh, older men that I can just reap some of that wisdom from them. and. Uh, one of them, Mr. Roscoe Lee Owens, he's very popular in Pasadena and all over Los Angeles County. He's one of my mentors. Uh, he's the producer for Jazz Zone. Mm. And he told me one day to make my passion profitable. Because mm. like, there was a lot of other career fields that I was interested in mm -hmm. and I was going after, but he presented that idea and it makes sense and I, I share it with other people that I talk to to make your passion profitable. Why not just get paid for doing what you love to do? And um, I kind of like grew up in the TV station here and, or at the theater when I was even younger. My mm -hmm. mom's always kept me uh, involved with anything creative. That's what draws my attention. And so that, that's what I'm gonna make my passion. And that's where I'm gonna get my profit. <laughs> I believe you. So. I believe you. You sound very determined and and that the fact that you have a mentor and not only that you have a mentor but you listen to the advice that you're given because I remember a time when we would sit at the elders feet and now people are ready to discard the elders and what they say and and it's so nice to hear a young man say well I have about three to five mentors you know <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't always that way I actually Growing up through my life, I had to learn things the hard way. Yeah. So if anybody knows me, they'll, they'll know that end of the story. But when I hit 25 and I was um, figuring out like, okay, what's the next step in my life? I realized that I don't have all the answers. Let me ask somebody who's been there before. Um, and luckily for me, the people that I found were very willing. 
and to take me under their wings, mm -hmm. um, like th they were doing me a favor, or right. or actually they were acted as though I was doing them a favor, but it, in a reality it was me who was benefiting the most out of the relationship. So, right. Um, I keep I switch between them because uh, sometimes I get great advice over here and then great advice over here, and I just blend them. And then you know sometimes there's this stuff that just not particularly for me. Right. And I, I leave that out. But you just kind of you gotta have that discernment, mm -hmm. and you, you want to have somebody who generally cares about the future, because that's what each of my mentors have in common. They mm -hmm. generally care about the future, and they love what they're doing, and that's what passed on to me. You, you gotta love what you do, or you'll get bored very easily. <laughs> bored very easily, and try to find something else, yeah. and you know maybe get in trouble. But like I said earlier, you're very focused and very determined, and. I'm trying to think of something that I need so I can hire your oh, <laughs> production you, company. You keep on with the compliments. It's going to be like all kind of purple. And I didn't have no makeup. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be blush. Black people do blush. It's going to be all purple <laughs> under my peach fuzz. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we like purple. <laughs> because you're also a visual artist too, right? Yes. Um, I love to draw. I, I was actually one of those habits that I fell upon accidentally because uh -huh. I would get in trouble when I was little and my mom would take all of our toys away. So we were stuck with just coloring books because mm. you can't do nothing on punishment. Right. So we would color and then we ran out of coloring books and um, we would start drawing. Like All of my siblings are equally creative, if not more talented than myself. And uh, so we draw, paint, uh, I would say sing and dance, but I only do that when nobody's looking. <laughs> In the shower. You one of them secret singers, huh? <laughs> okay, talk a little bit more about your childhood because I know you mentioned your mom and I know you have siblings and, you know, when you guys were on punishment and stuff like that. Talk about, you know, your mom and the influence she had on just, you know, your creativity and you as, oh. as a young man. Do we have enough time? Um, <laughs> my mom and my dad are probably my greatest mentors, mm. probably because they did it like, um, like secret messages, or it, they would tell me stuff that I would just be like, Ugh, or I would gaff off, and then later on down the line I would remember after I should have used it. <laughs> but um, my mom's great wisdom, every time I got on punishment, I should go read the book of Proverbs. <laughs> wow. So, I had it memorized by the time I was 13. Wow. <laughs> but, okay, I have, um, there's, there were seven of us, seven siblings. I'm dead center in the middle. Wow. I had a, older siblings that live in Cleveland, Ohio, and then my, my younger siblings are out here. Um, I had a younger brother. He's He was tremendously popular in the Pasadena, Altadena area. His name is Christian Uriah Bruce, and he passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, he was actually a mentor as well. Mm -hmm. um, he was going to school in Tuskegee University. Part of his passing was like a huge step for me in maturity. Mm -hmm. I was always kind of goofy and nonchalant. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just fed off of his energy. Mm -hmm. I, he, I was older than him by 18 months, but he kind of felt like a twin. So mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot from him, just the way he responded to people. I guess the way I responded to people wasn't proper <laughs> because I was always blunt and I would just say what I felt. And um, my mom, she's like, it was, there's little things that my mom's done that's worked wonders for me. Mm -hmm. uh, just from her ways of everyday corrections. Uh, I used to hunch over when I was a kid. Yeah. She would always tell me to get my shoulders out of my ears and stick my chest out. Mm. And then uh, I would, you know, feel like she was picking on me. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like a lot of kids go through this um, on a daily basis. Like they don't understand why their parents are telling them stuff. Right. And I, I was that kid. I don't want to do that. Oh, that sounds dumb. But as I. Uh, I got older and I could see the things that she changed in me mm -hmm. that other parents just kind of let go. I, I, I thank her a lot for that. Absolutely. I have, I have a straight back. Absolutely. <laughs> and you're sitting there nice and straight too. Oh. Mom, he's sitting there nice and straight. 
And so now when you get to the point where you're ready to start your own family, your your the I impact got, I got, that I got dizzy when you said don't that. Don't get dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, because I when I was raising my daughter, well, I'm still raising her, but I wanted the things that my parent taught me to be instilled in my child. So, like for you, when you're ready to raise a family, or tell me if we shouldn't talk about that yet, because I have a six year old daughter. I do. Wow! She lives See, in I Ohio. didn't even know. Oh my goodness. She's beautiful. Hi, Zaria. Aww. I doubt she'll watch this on the internet. But um, hopefully she will. I, I love her to death. She looks like me in a little girl's body. And she's awesome. Really smart. Oh, I bet she's beautiful <laughs> then. Oh, I think. Is she as talented as her dad, too? Probably. She's, she's I, I'm probably like the prototype. I, huh. The world is still not ready for her yet. Right. But she's only six. But by the time, you know, she decides what she wants to do in life. Right. She's going to be amazing at whatever. She's huh. really, really smart. So Excellent. She has my genes in her, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but see, no. I'm sitting across from you, and I'm thinking the world isn't ready for him yet because you have all this talent and these ideas, and I think you're, you're coming into your, your manhood so nicely. Wow. Even though, you know, there were some bumps because we all have to go there through were, them. There were, there were mountains. <laughs> mountains there were mount and valleys. <laughs> <laughs> Pits. <laughs> <laughs> but we've all had them. But if you can arrive where you or get where you're going in a decent amount of time, because I know some 40-year-olds oh. and 50-year-olds that are not where you are. So what would you say to them? Um... <laughs> just because someone's younger than you doesn't mean they can be your mentor. Um, Mr. Roscoe and a couple other people that I, are my mentors tell me all the time that they learn stuff from me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think it's all perspective and how people view the world. I know I don't view the world necessarily like I say normal people. I, right. There's a lot of times I don't feel normal. Right. But... Um, <laughs> There's a, there's a lot you can learn from anybody. You find something that you're interested in, what mm -hmm. you want to do in your life, you could be 60 and I want to be a carpenter and start building stuff. Right. You, you got to take that step. You can't just want to do stuff. I, I've floated around a lot. Just, mm -hmm. I want to do this. I want to do this. I wanted to be an architect just because I could just draw buildings. But then I found out that, that was there was a lot more math involved. Mm, <laughs> and I, was, yeah. I went through something else right. <laughs> immediately. Um, so, but my mom, when she, she found out that I wanted to be an architect, she has friends that are architects, and um, her friends would come over to our house and they would sketch stuff with me, mm -hmm. uh, show me techniques and drawing. She um, put me in visual arts and design academy at PHS. She's always kept me involved in some type of uh, art um, my sisters sing. My I have a sister that does hair. Like there's tremendous ranges of like creativity within my siblings. But my mom would always place us in in places that would benefit us. And at the time, I may not have noticed it. I took ballet when I was a little kid, and I thought it was like, mom, that's for girls. <laughs> but it helped me um, with my form, my choreography, mm -hmm. um, or just. Uh, you know, being able my rhythm, coordination. I get my yes. coordination. Yes. There's a lot of people who lack coordination. I'm not gonna put any people on blast, but people <laughs> I work with who lack coordination. Uh, <laughs> um, just because I have to sit out here and they don't. But I, I'm 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 excited. This is a good opportunity. Um, I never thought that I was that interested that people would want to hear about it. So. Of course, you are always interesting when you're multi-talented and multifaceted. And now I want to ask you about because you do, you know how to do everything here in this studio. And I asked you, you know all that stuff because it boggles my mind that somebody could retain enough information in their head to be able to sit at any one of these positions in this studio and just do it? Um, I would like to say that I'm more of a, a student still because, mm -hmm. you know, every day is a learning experience. Um, I work with Miss Lilia Gaspar, who's directing this show. Yes. She's an awesome teacher. Uh, she takes patience with me because mm -hmm. she could tell me something 
and I, I got bad memory. Like sometimes, like there's a lot of tedious things, but she she's real patient with me. Like, hey, uh, how about I told you to go to camera too? I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the people that I grew up with in mm -hmm. the TV station or in the theater, they've always been more than willing to share the information that they have, mm -hmm. which is. Um, great because that's how knowledge gets passed. Exactly. So anything that I do know, I try to share uh, just because it's been shared with me. Right. It's a free gift. So so who do you share your information with? Is it anybody in particular or is it just if you're if it's in the moment and you need to relay information? It's it's usually in the moment mm -hmm. um, simply because it's not really thought out or planned that, okay, right. I'm gonna go pass this knowledge on to this person. It's usually probably me yelling at them like, you messed that all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's, I, I do that at home. It doesn't necessarily have to be here. Mm -hmm. I told a young man on the bus the other day, pull your pants up. Yeah, I mean, it's just because I don't even wanna look at you know his rear end. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. if that, if nobody else is going to say it, I'll probably say it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's good that you did because a lot of people are scared to tell these young men, and I'm not. I'm not afraid to tell you you need to pull your pants up, and I don't want to see what color underwear That's you have good. on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I appreciate you. The, the thing is, it's because a lot of people do it. It's mm -hmm. one of those things that it came in as a fad, mm -hmm. but I, a lot of there's a lot of young men who don't know where it came from, and so maybe if you. If that knowledge is shared with them, like, that's how people advertise in prison, yeah. that they're available. Exactly. But, you know, you see movie stars and rappers do it. That's I told the young man this, and he was like, oh, that's cool. All right. Wow. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's a lot of uh, non-caring. So that makes it difficult to try to do your little part. Right. Especially when I'm not all the way perfect myself. So it's like, who's this guy to give me advice? or Right. But... You may not be all the way perfect, but there's a lot that you're doing that is good and that is right. So don't ever feel like I'm not, I can't tell anybody anything because I'm not, the, it's oh, not even about that. Oh, I wasn't saying that. Yeah. Well, you I gotta, just wanted to make sure you cut weren't. Cut back on the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Why? for dinner or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. I get hungry. <laughs> I'll probably get a but, spanking for that. My mom, watches. this. <laughs> on that, that lady. <laughs> that old lady. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would walk down the street but, with you. Aw. <laughs> I know. I tell everybody, that's my son. <laughs> my play son. <laughs> I, tell, I tell everybody that my mom's my sister. A lot of people wow. probably think that in Pasadena. But, oh, no, that's my sister. <laughs> probably do. Yeah. Well, I'm sure your mom is very proud of you and your dad, too. Now, let's talk about your dad. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm ready. Discipline. How? What? How? How did he discipline the the family? The, the my mom children? was more of the discipline. Really? I, I fear to this day for my mom. And you're not I, scared I wouldn't of your mess dad? with her. Um, my dad, he took more of the you just listen to me approach, and uh. I, I, I never really you know pushed his buttons. Okay, whatever you say goes, you know. Right. But so he never really had to discipline me. Uh, my mom pretty much. Took she care took of care of that, yeah. yeah. So she took care of that, so he didn't have to. Yeah, I guess that's Is the way that, it went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool though. They balance. Yeah, I, very, balance very well. In balance in the relationship. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell, even though there's um, because you're a character. <laughs> you are. You're a character, but it's a good thing. Okay. That's a good thing because you have, you know, personality and and. All, everything that goes with that. Plus, you are open and receptive to learning. Learning and be. then giving back. So, and I was gonna ask you about maybe going into the schools with some of the young men that wear their pants sagging and have you thought about doing some things like that? Um. I thought about it. <laughs> does it count? Does it count still? If you, of does, course, does the it still counts. Count? Yeah. I haven't. Um, I'm not like a. I can't say I'm not a public speaker. I talk everywhere I go, mm -hmm. but I haven't decided to like go into the schools and 
um, speak to the youth. Mm -hmm. I, I really been trying, lately I've been working on myself. It's a, I gotta work on Brandon. Right. Cause he's, I, I was lost for a while and I'm, right. I'm just barely finding my way. Mm -hmm. And um, it's difficult to admit that cause you know, I'm 25. I pictured myself when, by the time I was 25 that I'd be a lot further in my, in my career, in my mm -hmm. life. First, I had to figure out what it is I wanted to do. Right. Um, then I recently found out that your frontal lobe in your brain doesn't stop, you know, putting itself together properly until you're 25. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'm right on schedule. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> even if you were 30 or whatever, you're on your schedule. It doesn't. Oh, yeah. Who says we have to be ready by 18, 21, 20? Who puts those labels and those rules? And everybody's an individual. And you have to take care of Brandon where Brandon is and do what Brandon needs to do. And I have to do it, you know, so we can't. So don't do that to yourself because I, oh, I'm 30. I should be a millionaire by now. Oh, not, I don't do it to that extent, but okay. if I don't stay on top, I know my, my faults. Like, that's another thing people have to know their own characteristics, the right. good and the bad. Right. And I can procrastinate the I can procrastinate like a professional, and uh, it's a bad habit of mine. So if I don't keep myself on the ball, then I'll probably be sitting there playing Modern Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Not video games. <laughs> I, I have a, a big nerd side to me. So Really? Yeah. You like computers and, and video games? I don't know how to work them very good, but I like, I like the way they look. <laughs> I like gadgets. <laughs> so are you the one that comes along and messes them up for somebody else to fix? <laughs> Not today. If I do mix it up, they won't know it was me. I creep away. Something's wrong with that, that's something wrong with your machine. That's funny. I could see you as a little boy. You were probably something else getting in trouble and blaming it on your brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> they did it. It's seven of them. Pick one. <laughs> Oh, man. Did you do that? There probably was a couple occasions. I'm not even going, <laughs> I can't lie. There was probably a couple occasions that one of my siblings probably got a whooping for something I did. I now probably, you, probably didn't feel bad about it until afterwards. Now you're really going to get in trouble oh, with yeah, your they, mom. <laughs> she's going to ask you what incident and what day was it, <laughs> and she's going to whoop you for that I, stuff. And you know what? I would, I would still run to this day. I, I have no doubt in my mind I'll probably still get a whooping at 25 because what am I, I'm not going to hit that. I, that's for sure. Uh, right. Running is my best option. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about something a little more. Okay. A little more serious. You mentioned that you were in the military. You were a Marine. Yes. And I'm just briefly, I did, first I want to say thank you. Oh. For even enlisting, I don't know, did they come get you? You enlisted. Oh, no, they didn't come get <laughs> you. You volunteer. It was one of those, I told my friends, I said, I'm going to go to the Marine Corps. And everybody laughed. And I just went. And it was like, w where did he go? I came back in my uniform. I was a Marine. Wow. Um, my father was a Marine. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been really interested in the military. I like the structure of it. Mm. At the same time, I did not like the structure of it. But right. I like the structure of it. I like the discipline. Mm. I like the the look when you saw a Marine. It was just a Marine. Um, I like to think that I carry a lot of those characteristics, although I'm probably one of the few who went in and came out a lot similar to the way that he went in with just a few minor positive adjustments. adjustments. Mm -hmm. uh, thank goodness for no negative uh, mm. <laughs> defaults gained from there. Right. Uh, it was fun to me. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed myself. Probably too much, but I, I really <laughs> enjoyed myself. <laughs> wow, I've never heard anybody say that about the military. I never thought I would leave the United States, you know. Uh -huh. so, and I spent three years in Okinawa. And, wow. And so I got, to tra I got to travel a little bit, so it was fun. Yeah, so what's it like? What are the people in Okinawa like? Were they like... They're, they're way different. It's, their whole culture is uh, based about, around respect. So as I continue to travel the globe and learn different bits about uh, more cultures, because mm -hmm. once you find out what they do, you, then they explain to you why right. and how long they've been doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's the way things get integrated into their culture, because they pick things up from the Western side. Right. Uh, I really like Okinawans because they're, they're 
really all about respect. The way that they view themselves and other people mm -hmm. is, uh, I think we can learn a lot from them. Yeah. I think Americans grow up kind of spoiled. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> take, take everything for granted. And um, uh, it's just the little things like that. Right. That, well, I want to say thank you so much we all for done? coming and blessing the environment. Thank it you. has truly been a pleasure and keep doing what you're doing and your family should be very very proud your daughter too oh thank you i appreciate that this has been indie encounter a journey into the world of the independent creators of art and artistic communication i want to thank today's guest brandon d bruce for sharing his artistic vision with us if you want to find out more about today's guest check him out on facebook or jazzzone.net or jamminfoundation.org. His email address is brandon underscore bruce at yahoo.com. Check out our website here at pasadenacommunitynetwork.com and select the Arroyo channel. You may also check out the website oneformark.com for additional information about our show. Thanks to our director, Lilia Fernandez, Gaspar, and crew for making this show possible. Thanks to all of you. We hope to see you here again when we embark on another Indie Encounter.